Welcome to a very special 3ABN Today. My name is C.A. Murray, and allow me once again to thank you for sharing just a little of your day with us. Today is a very special program. Uh, some years ago, when I was pastoring in New York City, I had a chance to sit and talk with then Mayor of New York City, Edward I. Koch. I explained to him about Adventism, what the Adventist church is doing as he walked through the church, and together we began to dialogue about the many things that the Adventist church was doing. Loma Linda University, the many colleges and schools. And he said to me at that time, I didn't know this about the Seventh-day Adventists. You may be the very best kept secret in all of the Christian world. Well, today, on today's program, we want to talk about an institution which may be one of the very best kept secrets in all of Adventism. But hopefully after today's program, it won't be a kept secret anymore. And that's Wachita Hills Academy and College there in Arkansas. Jill and Greg Morricone had a chance to go and spend some time on the campus of the college and of the academy. And today we're going to focus on the academy, some of the work that the academy is doing, some of the great men and women who superintend the work at the academy, and some of the wonderful consecrated students who attend that uh, school and who graduate from that school and go on to college and go on to serve the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're very, very excited to highlight Wachita Hills, and that is a mouthful, Wachita Hills there in Arkansas. In our first segment, Greg and Jill have a chance to speak with the principal of the school, Harriet Clark. She is accompanied by Rob Neal, who is the registrar, and he also teaches. And they're going to be discussing the founding of the academy and the academics that take place on the campus of Wachita Hills Academy. Thank you, Pastor C.A. We are here on the beautiful campus of Washita Hills Academy and College, and today we wanted to talk about Washita Hills Academy. This is not a green screen. This is actually, we are actually outside. The sun we is shining. Are. You'll see the clouds come and go. You may see it get dark, a little bit light, maybe even a rabbit or dog run behind us. This campus is absolutely gorgeous. They're out, what, 30 minutes or so from the interstate, and it seems like you're going out in the middle of nowhere, and maybe we are, <laughs> but then it just opens up into a beautiful campus. The campus is not only beautiful, but the people here are too, the mm. students that we've met, the staff here as well. But today, we have a number of uh, things that are gonna happen. We're gonna have some uh, students come, some more staff join us. We're gonna introduce who we have here shortly. So we're gonna go to some different segments, but I know that you'll enjoy uh, today's mm. program. Amen, that's right. It's such a privilege to be here on the it campus. Is as Greg said, of Washington Hills Academy and College. And we don't want to waste any more time. We want to introduce Mrs. Harriet Clark and Rob Neal. And Mrs. Clark, I just think Greg and I have known you for many years. I was trying to think how many years, maybe 25, 20? Something I'm like that. Something like it's that. It's been a long time. But thank you so much for how you've poured into not only our lives, but so many <laughs> young people through the years. You and your husband are, are and continue to be tremendous Amen. blessing have been continued to be. And your Thank entire you. family. That's right, yeah, for sure. So where did the vision start for Washita Hills Academy? I think the vision started back in the 70s while we mm. were in Loma Linda. My husband wanted to go to mission service. We both wanted to do mission service. And when he graduated, we owed too much money. Yeah. And the general conference wouldn't consider us. And so we thought, let's go to a dark county and do mission service. And as we, a few years later, read about Madison, God's beautiful farm, mm -hmm. and all of the units that they set up, which became real beacons of light in those communities, we thought we'd love to do something like that in the Southwestern Union, and especially in Arkansas, Louisiana, our home conference. Wow, wow. Amen. amen. 
And so then the Academy was born, not in the 70s, but what year did the Washington Hills Academy actually begin? 1988. Wow. Wow. That's a number of years. So through the years, <laughs> I'm sure it's hard to count uh, each student, but you're probably in the well in the hundreds that have passed through Washington mm -hmm. Hills Academy. Mm -hmm. And it's neat too because the Academy, I know we're not here to, to focus on the college, but God has also birthed the college, Washington yes. Hills College here too. You know, when you think about the original dream, you probably had no idea where it would be today. No, we didn't. Yes. <laughs> so you look at all, all that's here and you say, wow, praise be to the Lord from whom Amen. all blessings flow. Amen. Because God I understand that, uh, I mean, you know, we're here in front of the uh, boys' dorm. We have beautiful administration buildings, the girls' dorm, girls right dorm behind, behind us, us here, uh -huh. cafeteria, all the staff homes, and uh, you don't owe on any of this. Right. By so, God's grace. That's Amen. Incredible. That is correct. Wow. The Lord has been faithful. He has, and we only build as we have the money to build, and so sometimes it takes us a long time to finish a building, but when it's done, it's done well, and we don't owe anything on Amen. it. Amen. That's such a blessing. Uh, it's been quite a few years since Greg and I were here, and just oh, wow. walking the campus and seeing the changes in the buildings and how it's growing, that's a blessing. Now, you are a principal, and you wear other hats as well. I do. Okay. You teach, or? I teach. I teach. Uh, sophomore and senior English and senior Bible and a vocational education class. Amen. And then we want to get into the work study program, but Rob, tell us your position here and what you do at Watchtown Hills Academy. Well, I'm the registrar currently and I also teach. I teach Bible and history and I direct the bell choir. So, you know, you just said that like just really quick. I mean, those, <laughs> <laughs> those are like serious uh, responsibilities. They we all, we all wear, wear many hats. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a labor of love, it's a ministry, it's a calling really it is. in life. Yeah. Amen. And you and your wife, and I know you have a couple of children, have been here now how long? Uh, 17, well I've been here 17 years. I yes. met my wife here. Uh, she was a graduate of this school oh, um, way back from the very beginning. So um, another blessing. Christine, yes, yes, yeah, yes. You I have would a recognize beautiful wife. Christine Bothney as she was at the time. And then the uh, Lord led us together in ministry and uh, uniting our lives. And then we have two, uh, two children. She's able to stay home with them and educate them. So that's a blessing. Amen. That's an incredible blessing. Mm. So tell me, uh, you have a work study program and we will get into more of the vocational yeah, aspect, but this, this segment, especially we're talking about the academics. Um, academics is important for any education. So tell me, um, tell me about the National Merit Scholarship and, and what goes on with that. Yes, well, you know, our, our academic program is a, a strong academic program. Uh, students are well prepared for college. We, we believe that true education really has more than uh, just vocational and the religious part, although that's the primary you know, yes. purpose of it. But in reality, um, that shouldn't take away from the academic parts, uh, which we yes. are told should be a high standard. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, over the years, we've um, seen consistent uh, ACT scores that have been um, much higher than the national average and then higher than our local state average and any state in the union. You have the graph there and this shows your students against the Against national the national average and our mm. state local uh, average as well. And um, it, it has been that way consistently for uh, five, ten years, uh, for many years actually. Um, just, I think, a testament really not to necessarily, you know, academics here, but God's plan for education. That when you yeah. follow the holistic Amen. plan, yes. more than just the academics, then it, it all comes together and God blesses in ways that, um, because the students don't have as much time when they have the vocational program and so right. forth for the academics, but all together it really, um, it comes together in, in a solid academic program. Amen. Amen. So I was going to ask to what do you attribute the success of the students academically and you see it as just the blessing of God um, because of the holistic approach? Yes, true education is, is really the, the harmonious development of the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. And when you have the package, um, they all grow together. Uh, you know, uh, we're told that as we develop the intellectual, uh, the spiritual capabilities, the intellectual capacity will increase. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really what we see happen in the young people as they, as they focus not only on the, on the spiritual and the vocational, but apply themselves to the academics. It, Amen. it, it, it equals success. Praise the Lord. It's really neat because I think it's a great plan, you know, and it's God's plan too, yes. I feel, you know, to have a well-balanced yeah. education. Mm -hmm. So I know we're talking about the different segments and time is getting away from us in a hurry. So we're going to prepare now for the next segment. Please stay with us.
What a beautiful school and what beautiful people working there at the school. In this particular segment, Greg and Jill talk again with Harriet Clark. She's going to be joined by Deborah Kim and Marcus Barton. They're going to be talking about the vocational training uh, and God's plan at the academy, working with the hands. You know, it was God's original plan that students spend some day in class, then spend some part of the day also working with their hands and learning skills. And this idea is deep into the mindset of those at Wachita Hills. Greg and Jill, Harriet Clark, Deborah Kim, Marcus Barton. We're sitting here on the campus of Washington Hills Academy. That's in right. College. Mrs. Harriet Clark, and we just switched chairs a little bit. Uh, we had Mr. Rob Neal, and he went to go prepare in a little bit. We're going to hear the bell choir, so I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to that. Yes. But we added in Deborah Kim and Marcus Barton. Barton? Barton. Yes. Okay. And tell us, Deborah, how long have you been here? This is my fourth year. Okay. You're a so senior. So you're a then. senior here at Washington Hills Academy. Yep. And you have a little family history here. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, 20 years ago, my sister was here. Uh, my oldest sister, mm -hmm. she would have graduated. And um, about eight years ago, my dad was the boys' dean here. Before Pastor Powell was the boys' dean, wow. my dad was the dean. Wow. Okay. And two of your other sisters attended here. Oh, yes. Out of my six siblings, five of them attended here. Wow, wow. When I walked up to the, we're sitting in front of the, the men's, the boys' dorm here. When I walked up, I saw Deborah and I thought, she's a Kim. I don't know <laughs> if I've ever met her, but we used to know the family. And I think your mom was maybe pregnant yeah. with you. Maybe the last time I saw, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> but, <laughs> but just the facial structure, you know, right away. Oh. Well, we appreciate you, of course, and your family. And so, yeah, Thank you. it's, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. nice to meet you here. And so you've been here then um, four years, like you said, and uh, we're talking about this segment here as far as vocational training. Mm -hmm. So tell us some of the aspects that uh, you've done here and what does, well, the academy offer for vocational training? Well, for girls on arrival, they usually work in the kitchen. And after, maybe after being here for a while, mm -hmm. and if they keep up um, trustworthiness and diligence, then they'll get moved to the office and they'll help grade papers. Oh, wow. Um, for me, I help Mr. Neal doing registrar work and okay. things like that. Mm -hmm. And so wow. that's what I've been doing here. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And I know that uh, as we've been around campus here, we've seen some, uh, looks to me to be like gardens. And, yes. And uh, agriculture. Yeah, we have an agriculture program um, for the juniors, all juniors, they have to take an ag class. Okay. And that happens on every Wednesday. Okay. And so we have two tunnel houses and a greenhouse. And in one of the tunnel houses, the juniors get to grow their own food. And after it's ready, and ready to harvest, they take it into the calf to eat for our meals. Wow. What type of produce do you have in the garden, in the greenhouse, in the winter time? Um, this past winter, we had tomatoes. And we had vine ripened tomatoes all winter, um, around 100 pounds each week. 100 so, pounds? Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's great. That was one of our treats this winter. Yes, <laughs> tomatoes in the middle, middle of winter. That's rare, even in southern Illinois. <laughs> so, Marcus, tell us about then the uh, different aspects of vocational training that you're involved with. And how long have you been here? Well, that's true. We haven't asked him that. Mm -hmm. um, this is also my, uh, my fourth year. I'm also a senior here. Um, when guys first come to, to the school, they usually get put in, um, in in ag. We call it ag. It's 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 agriculture. Um, agriculture is both. Um, it's kind of a combination between the real agriculture side and kind of grounds. Mm -hmm. They also take care of the campus. You know, when especially when there's like uh, big storms, you have like a lot of branches that fall on campus, so they go around, pick those up, things of that nature. Um, and they also, you know, learn um, some things about. You know, tractors, stuff like that, like the farm. Yeah, the equipment. Farm, nice. farm you get exactly. to drive some of the, like yes. the mowers and the. Yeah. Yeah. Some service. Now I understand that uh, you're involved with media too and websites. Yes. Yes. Um, what do you do? So we, what I do is I do a lot of content updating. So um, a lot of things, a lot of things on the website, also our social media on on Facebook. This is for the academy. This is for this for the nice. academy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and so a lot of things like that. Also, um, in the previous years, of, I've been working website for the past two years. Um, you know, we've been kind of transitioning from, from different websites. And so kind of, um, you know, they, they ask you, you know, what do you think about the design, stuff like that. And so you get to 
put some input into that and um, just helps you get more experience and more general uh, knowledge about what it takes to, you know, to work on, on websites. That's great. What about construction aspect? Because you all, the students are involved in many of these buildings that were All like, of the buildings all except of the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what okay. does construction mean? Does it mean hammering nails? carrying boards? <laughs> it can mean a lot of things. Construction, they, they do so many things. Um, they, they, they do maintenance around and you and also work on different mm. building projects. So not just new buildings, but you're talking just general maintenance. Exactly. Um, plumbing to uh, drywalling to um, um, some electrical. have e electrical, mm -hmm. some have helped in uh, bricklaying. Um, and we've worked on this uh, uh, new health um, health center retreat, um, Fantastic. and also we've also helped at the new church that they're building in in, in, uh, in Amity. Oh, that's oh. great! And you're putting in some new staff housing too, I believe. Yes. Yes. We're really excited about that. Okay, it, it's always a need, you know. Oh, I mean, yes, if you have is. you have staff because we have students, but then you need a place for the staff to live. So mm -hmm. uh, right now, about half of our staff are in Amity. And it's Which only five is, miles, mm -hmm. but still, it's not nearly as convenient as being right here on campus. So. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And it's such a beautiful setting. So tell us, I know we talked with Mr. Neal about the academic program, the academic structure, but Mrs. Clark, what's the importance of the vocational training, coupling that with the academics? God's plan for education was to com combine the two, both the uh, didactic learning, classroom learning, and the hands-on learning. And we know from experience that having a combination helps students learn better when they are in the classroom and when they're studying for their regular classroom test and all. But it also helps them develop skills that they wouldn't develop otherwise and a very good work ethic. And those are things that are helpful to you regardless of what oh, your yeah. profession is. Mm -hmm. Yep, very true. It's important to know how to work to succeed it in life. Is. And no matter it what is. profession, no matter what God calls you to do, and I know you're training students for service, but you need to know how to do those practical, common sense mm -hmm. life skills. Right. That's very important. Yeah, so I know, Deborah, that you're involved in literature evangelism as well, yes. as I think all students are required do to. Do all is students that, do something? No, not, not all of them. Academy, in the oh, college. Not, okay. college they do, okay. So you've been involved with literary evangelism? Yes, a couple years ago they had they offered literary evangelism for every Sunday. Students would go out and canvas for eight hours. Okay. And so um, they offer that again this year. And so I think there are seven students who go out every Sunday into different local towns and there they do literary evangelism, canvassing. Do you enjoy that? Yes, I, I do. <laughs> you know, I think the neat thing of doing literary evangelism, which is religious books, you know, mm -hmm. door to door, is that you're spreading God's Word, Amen. and you don't know where that seed is going to come to life and uh, a soul will be one yes. to the kingdom. Isn't that neat? Yes, yes. Yeah, it really is. That's incredible. Yeah, for sure. Well, we thank you, Marcus, for, for sharing with our three band family at home, and we just pray God's blessings it's over you pleasure. and your, your future life. What do you want to do next year? You're a senior, you're graduating, so what's your plans? Uh, I'm planning to go to Andrews University. Nice. Fantastic. Good and take, you. do you know what major? Uh, like I'm looking at double major in economics and finance. Wow. wow. Good for you. Amen. And what about you, Deborah? I'm planning on attending Kettering College. Okay. Um, that's where my parents are living right now in the Dayton area. And so I plan on attending there for a couple of years and maybe transferring um, to Andrews. That's great. Um, that's great. Well, thank you very much for the positive influence. I know you are here mm -hmm. and uh, God's blessings upon both of you. As you continue to walk in His way, you'll never go wrong in life. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, let's transition now to our next segment. As we have said, we've been very, very impressed with the, the tenor, uh, the spirituality of the young people that come through Watchtower Hills Academy and through their college. One of the great programs there is the music program. And in uh, our third segment, uh, we get to hear some of the music. Greg and Jill will talk with Stephanie Fox, Bethany Powell, Jonathan Holman, and then uh, a little bit later on in the segment, Pastor Sam Solaire who uh, deals with their chaplaincy work and also with their mission program. We're happy about that. Zach Casozo and um, Marcelino, uh, young people at the school. You'll be impressed with the quality of the music, the spirituality of the young people. This is a good segment. You'll be blessed. We're here again at the beautiful campus of Washita Hills Academy, and this is really 
not green screen. We're actually outside, so this campus is alive and well. You may hear uh, some of the wind blowing through our microphones or even some of the uh, traffic on the road out here, but that's a good thing because this campus isn't dead. There's a lot of activity here, and we're having a wonderful time. We've been switching out different people, students, staff, through these different segments. And who do we have with us now? We're switching to a music segment. That's we've right. done academics. We've talked about the work-study program, the vocational program. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about music. And you know this is near and dear to oh, my Oh, yes, heart. you love music. <laughs> and so we have Stephanie Fox. And when I first met Stephanie, I thought, are you student or staff? But you are a staff, and you are in charge of the music program. Is that correct? What's your role here? That's right. I'm the music ministry director here. Um, so I direct the two choirs, the ensemble, uh, teach the strings and voice lessons, and I also teach some English here as well. That's wonderful. Now you have a delightful accent, so I would guess Arkansas is not home for you. No, actually I'm from Australia. So I studied there, grew up there, and I moved here just a year ago. Okay. Amen. I'm sure that's quite a story how God brought you here. It is. Amen. Yeah. And so sitting next to you is Bethany Powell. Yes. And tell us what, what year you are here. I'm a junior here. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been at Washita? I've been here for two years. So this is my third year here. And uh, I'm a staff kid, so I stay at home and go to school. What do your parents do? My dad is the Academy Boys Dean. Mm -hmm and he's also the chair of the religion department in the college, mm -hmm. so he teaches classes there as well. And we have next to you, Jonathan Homan, no? Yes, yeah, Homan. Oh, Homan, yeah. okay. And tell us where you're from and how um, long have you been here? I'm from Escondido, California. This is my second year, I'm a junior. A so, junior, yeah. okay. So what aspect of music are you each involved in? Let's start with Bethany mm -hmm. and tell us about. So I'm involved in large choir as well as chorale. And so I've really enjoyed it this year. Um, it's my first year in chorale. I was in bell choir my last two years here. And so we've had the privilege of traveling in chorale. So large choir just stays on campus and we sing for like special musics and music programs. Is well, everyone involved in large choir? Yes. yes. So everyone learns to sing and... That's right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then chorale would be more elite or more specialized. Yes. We have to apply and... Yeah. Audition? Audition as well. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so you travel, you were saying? Yes. So we travel to um, different states. We've been to Oklahoma, um, to Michigan, to um, Arkansas, of course, and um, Louisiana. Yeah. And so I've really enjoyed traveling. I love singing. Um, and I really enjoy like ministering to people through music. I've seen people even in tears sometimes by um, the ministry of music. It really does open doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it touches people's lives, I believe, in a very special way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sure does. So uh, Jonathan, what, what aspect of music are you involved with here at the Academy? So I'm in the other option which is bells. Um, oh, that we have, like fun. Yeah, it is pretty fun. We have 13 members this year, uh, six, guys, six girls, seven guys, okay. and we have five octaves of bells, um, four octaves of chimes. Um, we travel a lot also, same touring schedule as a small choir. Um, this year we've been to, besides in Arkansas, we've been to Texas and also Tennessee. So, and in all the years of Bell Choir, they've gone to like 13 states. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. So you obviously enjoy it. Yes, I do enjoy it. Yeah, that's great. It is quite a ministry, isn't it? It is. To be able to, I mean, I know when you actually, you're, you're playing the music, but then also, do you do little testimonies yes, or something yeah. in between the yeah, songs? Introductions. Yeah, little introductions. Yeah. Yep. And you can bring those nice spiritual thoughts mm -hmm. and nuggets. Yeah, that's So you great. do the Bell Choir. How many uh, strings in the ensemble, or what's the ensemble like? Well, we have 10 people and the string ensemble. Um, we're kind of limited to traveling because we're all in different groups, but we mostly play for like special music, also at the Christmas program, so. That's wonderful. So Stephanie, why, is the, why do you feel that music, because obviously you came all the way from Australia to here to lead out in the music. You're, what was your position? You're in charge of the music for the Academy. That's right. The director. So I know then you have a burden and a passion for music, obviously, but then to instill the musical skills and abilities in these young people. Yes, I'm really uh, excited about music ministry 
as a way of reaching people, sometimes in places and ways that a preacher couldn't go mm. or the spoken word couldn't go. Um, and so it's a very exciting to work with these young people, to train them, to develop their uh, full potential as musicians and then to go out and, and use that to bless others and share the gospel with people who often open their hearts to music. Amen. Amen. You know, I think one of the key words is ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, because music is just kind of a general thing, but when you're talking about ministry, that's neat. It really is because music is a ministry. And I think that's really neat here as far as at the academy, there's so many different aspects. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. That within, when we talk about it, they say ministry, mm -hmm. ministry, ministry. And that's great because it's evangelism. Mm -hmm. And how do you keep ministry focused? Because sometimes mm, in music, it could go performance focused or performance based. So how do you keep with the young people the ministry aspect of music? Uh, in the song selection that we choose, um, we carefully select those to portray the values and the messages that we are hoping to give. So the chorale has just been taking a program on the road that goes through the plan of salvation oh, and great. the life of Jesus, which has been a real blessing to, mm. to us to do that. Um, also, uh, the uh, students share in the program. So as mentioned, they'll introduce mm -hmm. the songs, usually with a three to five minute presentation, uh, sharing some of their thoughts and their experiences uh, and how the, uh, the song, the, the message in the song relates Amen. to them personally. Amen. And that's, that's something that is a blessing for Amen. us. So Bethany and Jonathan, just is, if you could say, I know we're going to some music now because we pre-recorded you all doing some music. So we're going to go to that in just a moment. But uh, how has being in the music program, how has it impacted your life? Has it made a difference or a change in your life? How has it impacted your life? Um, I really enjoy singing, like I already said. And so as I share through singing, um, it helps me grow in my relationship with Christ. And when I see people that have been touched by our singing and by our ministry with them, we mingle with them and we talk to them and make friends with them. And it just shows me how Jesus ministered to people. He mingled with them, mm -hmm. wanting their best good. And it helps me to draw closer to the one I'm serving. Amen. Jonathan? Well, Mr. Neal really stresses the importance of reaching out to people over the performance itself. So it's really taught me like how to connect with people, how to talk to them, how to reach out to them. So through music as a gateway, and then you can really reach them. So. Amen, amen. Well, God's blessings on you all in the music program. Thank you for being here. And right now we're gonna go and listen to some of the music that the students do.
Wow, that's absolutely incredible music. You know, we're just having fun, aren't we, here this <laughs> afternoon? And time is absolutely flying by. So they say when you're having fun, time flies. So we have another group here that uh, we've brought in that are uh, going to be talking about a different aspect of Washita Hills Academy. Who do we have with us? We're going to our mission segment. We came from music and going to mission. And to me, this would be the heart mm. and soul. You could correct me. But to me, it'd be the heart and soul of Very why Washita Hills Academy exists is the mission emphasis. Amen. We have Pastor Sam Solaire. And how long have you been a staff member here? You are the missions coordinator for Washita Hills Academy. Yes, that's one of the hats that I wear. And uh, my wife and I have been here for six years now. Wow. So we're old timers. <laughs> <laughs> so just real quick, you said one of the hats. So just run through, what are the other things that you do here? What are some of your other hats, hats yeah, that you wear? Yeah, I teach wear? at the academy level, of course, uh, Spanish, construction. I'm actually a pastor, I spent 25 years pastoring, but mm. I wanted my kids to come to school here. And uh, I said I'd wash toilets or whatever they wanted. And uh, so I speak Spanish and uh, do construction. That's what I teach as well. And then missions director as well, or coordinator. Yes, of course, that's exciting. Amen. So tell us, how long has Washita been involved in mission trips? Mm -hmm. The missions program at Washita started in 1998. And uh, first place was to the Philippines, where the students did evangelistic meetings and built a church, or at least helped to build a church. And since that time, uh, our students have been everywhere from Haiti to Siberia. Uh, we just got back from Cuba, our first, our third trip actually. Oh, that's incredible. To Cuba about a month ago. And um, so we've been all over. By God's grace, uh, during that time and with the program, over 1,500 souls have come to the Lord through this mission program. Amen. So we're, we're very, very grateful. Oh, that's incredible. Now sitting next to you are two students who you just came back from Cuba, both of you, yeah, and the yes, mission trip there. So we have Zach and Marcelino. I will not attempt last names, but I'll let you tell us last names. So Zach, we'll start with you. Tell us how long you've been here, your name, and um, what year you are. Sure, my name is Zach Sarsoza. I've been here for two years now, and I'm currently a senior. Wow and tell me about the impact, what your role was in the Cuban mission trip. Oh, for and sure. And the impact it had in your life. Well, for me, um, I was in charge of children's ministry and I love working with the kids. And so basically I had the opportunity to impact the lives of 30 to 40 kids in Cuba. And the reason why I'm here today is due to the fact of all the influence that God had placed in my life before I came here. And so it's just important for me to work in children's ministry so I can be a good role model and be an impact for other young people as well. And I just learned that wherever you go, you need to have a missionary mindset and that you need to persevere regardless of the situations that you're placed in, regardless of the heat, the <laughs> small amount of space that you have, the ruckus and all the loud noise. And God just showed me his love for... Was this your first people. mission trip? No, this is not. This was not, actually. This was my fourth, I believe. Okay. So the other places that you've been? I've been to Diné, Arizona, and Belize. Wow. But everywhere you go is a mission trip. Yeah, you know, that's, that's for point. sure. So you said 30 to 40 kids came every night? This is some every, of the kids? Every night, it was consistently 20 to 30 kids. Okay. okay. And there are 10 others that would pop up here and there. And just imagine a room that's around... 10 by 10 feet around that, filled wow. with 20 to 30, 12 year olds, so. Mm. <laughs> it was warm. Very warm yeah. and humid. <laughs> <laughs> and humid. Wow. So Marcelino, so what mission trips have you been? Y'all know you went to Cuba. Before that, I've been to the Dominican Republic uh, doing evangelistic series, and then I was in Guatemala digging wells. Oh. And you're also a senior too. I'm yes. sorry, I didn't actually ask you that. So you're a senior. Yeah, fantastic. So you've been all over as well, and mission is obviously a big part of your life too. I think everyone needs to go on a mission trip every, at maximum, two years. The, the perspective it gives you coming back to the United States helps you be more purposeful in your Christian walk. Mm, okay. So if you were to look at your life pre-mission trip, post-mission trip, how would you say your life is different? Um, here in the States, especially in the school like Watchdog Hills, it's almost, it's a very good environment, very few bad influences. But when you go on a mission trip, you can see the great controversy being played out day to day. Mm -hmm. And I am very forgetful. I can forget that there's good and evil 
fighting for my soul, fighting for all of our souls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, moment by moment, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. And uh, one story, if you don't mind. Please. In Cuba, um, I was the preacher for the evangelistic series. In I was going to ask you what you did. You were the yeah. preacher. Okay. Yeah. Um, and four or five times, five minutes before I stood up to speak, something would happen. I'd get a bad stomach ache. I'd have a random pain in my side. I'd get back pain, lightheaded. It would last for the duration of the meeting. And as soon as I stepped down, it would go away. The oh, first wow. time, the first time you can say, oh, it was just bad plantains, right? Um, <laughs> but, a little yeah. food poisoning. <laughs> but when it happens time after time after time, yeah. you see clearly that there's something bigger going on. Mm -hmm. And that awareness has been valuable for me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when one realizes that it's nothing of ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. it's God that's pouring the strength yeah. through you. You mm -hmm. guys are vessels. Mm -hmm. Isn't that neat that God is using to sure. further his cause? Amen. What a blessing. Does that mean you want to go into the theology? I am considering it. Considering um, it. I'm seeing where the Lord's going to lead me, Amen. but no matter what I study, I will have a focus on theology just to be able to give an answer for the faith I have. Amen. What about you, Zach? What do you want to do? Me? Right now I'm training to become a medical missionary in the future. The field, I don't know yet, okay. but regardless, I'm going to hit this head on and try my best in this field. Yeah, fantastic. So Pastor Soleri, you know, I'm thinking about the impact you, know, that you make worldwide, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, but also locally too. You know, even the, our own home field, which is Arkansas for you guys, mm -hmm. 3ABN, it's Illinois. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell me about the, uh, would you con do you consider this mission work here too in your local community as well, outreach and things that you do here? Outreach is really um, so important in, in the training of our students. You know, I could say that this is true. What I'm going to tell you about our mission program is true of our whole school. And that, is that we are interested in giving our students a practical experience uh, for them to practice the skills that they're learning here, public speaking, mm -hmm. outreach, medical missionary work, et cetera. Um, on top of that, then, we want them to experience God uh, personally. Uh, in the mission field, of course, they have a very raw, unscripted <laughs> opportunity. Here things are a little bit more managed, but still, each time it's them and God sharing Christ's love with those around them. Mm -hmm. And uh, here locally, we do. We, we want them to share Christ with each other, with the local churches that we serve. This is probably more true with our college program mm -hmm. where they're spread all over the churches in the air but our academy st students of course go to different s churches to put on programs and we're going to do some other things too I believe in the future where we want to yes. maybe impact some of the local public schools uh, we want to see ways that we can have our students do that as well amen yeah. thank you so much thank you for your ministry for the to me evangelism is the heartbeat of the gospel amen. and if amen. we're not changed ourselves how can we go out and share the gospel with a lost and dying world so we just pray god's blessings over each one of you and your ministry here at washington thank you thank, thank you so much thank you so much as you can see the students at washita hills academy travel and minister all over the United States and to other parts of the world. But one of the challenges you have when you have a ministry that travels so far and does so very much around the world as 3ABN has the same challenge, is to try to keep a face in the local community, to try to minister, to do outreach in the local community. And this is a challenge that Watchtower Hills uh, chooses to address and to face. So there is local community outreach that takes place uh, there also, as we do in the local West Frankfurt, Thompsonville community. It is good to have an international face and to do work around the world, but it is also good to have a face to plant your flag for Jesus in the local community. And so Watch the Hills chooses to do that. Uh, Jill and Greg had a chance to talk again with Harriet Clark, Deborah Kim, Jesse uh, is with them also, talking about outreach in the local community. We're back here for another segment here at Washita Hills Academy. And, you know, we were just talking about um, the Academy's mission and what mm -hmm. they do around the world, but we also have the local community outreach. We're going to talk about that in this segment and also maybe what they do for fun here at the Academy. So you mean they do fun? Of course, I know they do fun. They do fun. Well, <laughs> we I've brought seen Mrs. Clark back. It's <laughs> not just um, academics and, no, it's not. and outreach and all that. They do fun, too. There's some time for recreation, too. So we're going to talk about that here in this segment. <laughs> so we've brought uh, Deborah back. 
good to Hi. have you back. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about, I know you want to talk about the aspect of the local outreach here in the community. What all takes place here? Yes, on Sabbath afternoons, uh, we have different activities that we do to keep uh, us busy and to, to make Sabbath a nice, recreational, you know, a, a happy delight. time. Yeah. yeah, Sabbath a delight. <laughs> yeah, and so some of the things we do, we do literature distribution. Um, so we'll, the students get split up into different groups and each group is given a certain amount of glow tracks or sometimes we'll do, we'll advertise um, evangelistic series or we had a health expo this past year and we advertise that as well. And then we'll hand those out to the community to the local towns. So like flyers and things you'll pass out? Yes. Is that what you mean? Okay. Yes. So that's Good. the type of things we do. Um, we also do sunshine vans. Um, we go and sing to shut-ins or people who just can't get out, uh, pe lonely people. We like to sing to them mm. on Sabbath. And um, we also go to the nursing home and we'll sometimes we'll sing in the people's rooms or we'll go in the general area like in the eating eating area and we'll sing to the people that are there and give them a program. You know, now you're telling us a really incredible story about a lady. So can you just tell us that story real quick? Sure. So that happened on Community Service Day. Okay. We usually have two Community Service Days each year. And so this time, um, I went with two other girls and one of the staff members. And she is about 94 years old. She says she's turning 95 in 94 like, years wow. young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so she gets around. She can walk pretty well. But you can tell, like, she just doesn't have a lot of energy. And she also has bad eyesight and mm. it's kind of hard for her to get around and clean herself and so we walked in and at first it looked it looked okay <laughs> and then we, we started we decided to tackle the kitchen and we were opening cabinets and there were cockroaches um, everywhere there are cockroaches everywhere and we also found a few dead mice and so we had to clean those up and so um, she needed help she needed a lot of help yeah. she she can't do it herself her closest family members are like Little Rock, so that's almost two hours away. And two of her three children have already passed away. Mm. And so she's pretty lonely. She even sleeps in her living room instead of in her bed so that if anyone calls during the night, she, during the night she could answer the phone. And so you could just tell that she's living a very lonely life. And so we got, to, we got to spend that whole day with her. Usually community service is only in the mornings, but we were able to convince our supervisors to let us stay for the afternoon and finish up some, some laundry. And we slept and mopped. And one of the girls that went with us noticed that her fingernails and her toenails had grown really long. Mm. And she hadn't cut them herself. And especially her toenails, they were very long. So we soaked her feet and we Aww. clipped her nails. Miss Sherry it was a staff member who went with us. And so we went to the Dollar General store and we bought um, stuff to, like nail clippers and like a, a pan a thingy, a basin, so that we could soak her feet and, and clip her toenails. And so. She, That's she really, really neat. It. You know, it's like the gospel in action, you know, because yes. Christ went around, like you were saying, to serve others. And I can just imagine the joy that must have brought to this lady's heart and just the, the loneliness. So to have people in her house and taking care of her needs, too. That's I great. was real yes. proud of the students. You know they that? wanted to continue. They wanted to finish and they weren't just totally um, appalled at yes. the conditions and wanted to get out. As yeah. soon as they Amen. Could. Kind of going the extra mile. Mm -hmm. so it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a testimony to the type of mm. students who come and the staff and the leadership who work to instill those godly principles Very in the true. young people. That's wonderful. And we want to know about fun, what you all do for recreation. We have Jesse McDermott. Yes. And what year are you here? This year I am a sophomore. So is this your second year? Yeah, this is my second year here, yeah. So uh, for recreation, some things we do. We have, at the beginning of the year, we have camp out, which is when the whole school we go and we uh, go to a campground and we camp for the weekend. You mean you pitch tents? Yeah, we pitch Ooh. tents. Wow, build campfires? Yes, we build campfires. I'd like tents. that. Yeah. Roast things over the fire? Yeah, I roasted a apple, I think. All right, <laughs> <laughs> I roasted an apple over the fire. I never yeah. thought of that. It was interesting. Um, then later in the year we have, um, well, towards the end of the year, actually, we have backpacking. That's really fun. Um, for the people who don't want to go backpacking, they go camping again. Sure. But backpacking is really fun. We drive to a location, not too far, and uh, we take all our stuff, our backpacks. We, they, uh, the school gives us some backpacks if you don't have one. And we hike in about four miles, I think. And uh, we get there, we pitch our tents, and uh, we build fires, um, we hike in all our food and everything, uh, so we cook it while we're there over the weekend. 
and then we hike back out. It's about a total of nine miles. Wow, so that's, that's a, a lot, lot of, of walking. You know, one thing too I noticed in this part of Arkansas as we're traveling to get here is there seems to be quite a bit of water, like ponds and lakes yes. and stuff. Water. Could I ask, do you do anything in the water, like maybe canoeing or kayaking? kayaking? Yeah, we uh, we are gonna go on a canoe trip. Ooh. All right. Yeah, we're nice. down the uh, Cato River, not too far, and uh, we do that for work time. It's about four yeah. hours. It's really fun. We right used to have one spot where we stop. Great. We go swimming a little bit. Yeah. That's exciting. I wish we could talk more, but we have one more segment. So we thank you, Jesse and Deborah, and we're going to go to our last segment. Community outreach is so very, very important. One of the greatest sources of PR for any institution, uh, for any endeavor, are the people who are involved in that institution. Not only the staff or the principal or the teachers or the administration, but perhaps most importantly, the students. The idea that several brothers and sisters will attend a particular school or that generations of students will attend, a father and son and daughter or a mother and daughter and son uh, going to the same school speaks well for what that school is trying to accomplish and what it's trying to do for, with, to, and through its student body. And so in this last segment, uh, part number five, Greg and Jill, again speak with Harriet Clark, but we bring back Bethany and Zach. These are two young people who attend the school, who talk about what the school is doing for them, why they are at Washita Hills, what Washita Hills is doing for them and what they're seeking to do for the school. This is very, very important because you want the students to buy in to what the school is doing. You want them to be a part of what the school is doing. You want the school to be a blessing to its young people. And uh, Zach and Bethany bespeak that Washington Hills is a blessing to them and is giving them direction and grace and faith and a spiritual experience in their student life. Hard to believe we're on our last segment I here. I know. Time has gone by quick. It has indeed. And we just want to talk in the last couple moments about the impact OHA has made Washington Hills Academy mm -hmm. on some of the lives of the students. So we have, of course, Mrs. Clark here. But sitting next to you, we have Bethany. And tell me, what do you like about Washington Hills Academy? I've really enjoyed the peaceful atmosphere here. And it's been conducive to my spiritual, mental, and physical growth. And I also, I've made many friends here that I think will last me for my whole lifetime. I'm mm -hmm. very thankful for that. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. And Zach, how has being here at Washington Hills Academy, how has it impacted your life? Well, personally, it's helped me to be more consi consistent with my devotional life. And not only that, I've learned to work hard through vocational ethics, through construction, through all kinds of things that kinds of things that they have taught us here. You know, Zach, I was thinking, you know, as far as just what you were saying here, as far as the impact and Bethany too, you know, as far as how Washita Hills Academy has been a blessing mm -hmm. to you. You know, I think about this, I know you're just two, and there's been multiple students that are currently here, and, and I think, mm -hmm. Mrs. Clark, all the students that have been through here, mm -hmm. that you guys would echo the same thing, you know, that all these other students would say the same. What a blessing that this academy has been mm -hmm. in their spiritual lives. And I know we all have a choice to make, doing Mrs. Clark, you know, each one of us have a choice whether we're going to serve Jesus or not. You know, so I know all these young people, I'm sure you pray for them, saying, Lord, please be with them as they leave the academy, as they leave the college and go out into the work that God has for them. But I know here in closing, I don't know if you have any closing thoughts that you would um, like to uh, share, but I know that the Washington Hills Academy has needs, probably for staff, because we're getting ready to go to the um, uh, address roll here, so we want to get your pen and paper ready. So maybe for staff needs or uh, interested, maybe sending their child here to the academy, maybe uh, financial needs. Would all that be true or other needs all that you have? All of it's true, right. Yeah. So we want to go to that address uh, role here shortly. Uh, before we do though, Mrs. Clark, we want to thank you very much for you and your husband, your family, for the vision that God has given you. And uh, we just pray for continued blessing mm -hmm. upon the academy, upon the college, upon you and your husband and the staff that is here. And you too that represent the student body here and all those that have been before you here in this, uh, this one hour program. We just want to know that we pray for you. Mm -hmm. We're behind you. We know that God has great plans for you right. and for this school. Right. So let's right. go to the address roll right now. If you would like to learn more about Washita Hills Academy, you may visit them online at washitahillsacademy.org. Let me spell that for you. O-U-A-C-H-I-T-A, hillsacademy.org. You may also give them a call 
at area code 870-342-6210. That's area code 870-342-6210. Write to them at Washita Hills Academy, Post Office Box 35, Amity, Arkansas, 71921. I hope you've been informed and impressed with what you've seen today as we took a look at Washita Hills Academy, doing a great work for the Lord. No longer, I suspect, the best kept secret in all of Adventism, but one that needs to be talked about. And um, we certainly are thankful for what the Lord is doing to and through that particular school. Ellen White says in the book Education that teaching is a great ministry and all true teaching is ministry as we prepare our young people not only to be good citizens of this world but also to prepare for the higher citizenship which is in the world to come to train head hand and heart to be of service here and now but also not to forget that there is an eternity that must be prepared for. She also says in that book that we ought to teach our young people to be thinkers and not mere reflectors of other men's opinion. It is important that we teach our young people to think for themselves, to find God for themselves, to learn about God for themselves, to speak from their heart and not just to be parrots of other people's opinion. And as you listen to these young people, you can see that Washington Hills is teaching them to do great things for the Lord, but not only to do things for the Lord, but to find the Lord for themselves and to follow in the path of righteousness. Should you want to hear more about this particular school, you saw the information, you can always call us or call them directly and get that information. Well, our time is fast slipped into eternity. Allow me in closing now to wish you both grace and peace through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye and God bless.